Well, hey everybody, been a while since I did an update, so uh, let's do this part two of wiring coming up right now. Well, good morning everybody. Welcome to part two of our wiring uh, portion of uh, our swap. Uh, today, I want to show you the, um, the, the two items that I forgot to uh, mention in the last video. Uh, one of them was the oil pressure line, and the other one was the CAN uh, network lines that you need to do. Um, let's take a look first at the uh, oil pressure line. First of all, you see your two buses up here for your uh, connections on all your lines. The one that's on this side, um, I'll give you the, uh, the part number that this is so that you can follow it on any diagrams. These uh, are are B and E uh, as far as designation they're the same number I think it is a one two three three E and one two three three B okay now I've got this hooked up I got it hooked up down below on the oil filter the top of the oil filter from a sensor this wire is a gray wire solid gray and it comes out of the large body block that's down here underneath the uh, the uh, air box right there it comes and splices into this right there you see how it splices in and there's the connection it comes out and then your gray line is right there all right as you can see uh, when I when I uh, started doing this, I clipped that one inadvert inadvertently, and I went back and, and uh, matched it up, make sure I was on the right one. And so, yeah, here's the gray line. You can see the gray line right there. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of it so you can see it, and uh, it'll be easy for you to identify. Okay, now that you've seen that, also two other wires that you need to splice together. This is your CAN, C-A-N, your CAN network. That is a, uh, a random access network. Uh, that is a very common, common network that's used in a lot of automotive and a lot of industrial situations. One's a high speed and one is a low speed um, network. The high speed one is the white with blue stripe and the low speed is solid. white. Both of these are 75 gauge and uh, which makes them a little thicker than what the regular sensor wire is. There's a sensor wire and you can see the thickness is considerably better, uh, bigger on this. And all you have to do on these is connect the white to the white and the stripe to the stripe and that will complete your CAN network and should have a crank situation at that point. All right, now I've got them both soldered together and uh, that'll make these uh, good solid contacts. That one looks a little cold right there, but it's not. Uh, I just left a blob on there. But anyway, this one's soldered together, white, white, and white, blue, white, blue, they are together. Now I'm going to shrink wrap them and uh, then I'll isolate them so that they do not have any interference with anything else. Also, the, uh, the gray wire that I told you about, that's the oil pressure, it's right uh, here. And I have already soldered that one. I've already soldered that one together and, uh, and uh, put uh, electrical tape on that one.
All right, last thing I'm doing is setting up my own relay and I'll unbox it here so you can see. This is a fuel pump relay. So you see that it's extra heavy duty. It also comes with a inline fuse so that uh, it's fused itself and, and it's much safer that way. So let me show you some of the, um, some of the connections that we've got here, okay? All right, back here, ouch. <laughs> back here to back. Uh, this purple wire is my wire and it's spliced in back here to back to this unit right here on the left side. And there is a wire down there that is blue and orange. Blue and orange, kind of quite getting it in focus, but you can see it's a blue and orange. It's on pin number 12. I spliced it in. Now I'm going to make more of a secure union than that one, uh, but this is just to test it to make sure I've got everything right. Now let's go to the other side. Uh, well, hang on, we got one other to do over here. Uh, on this side, you've got the crank line. This this goes to the solenoid of the starter. You'll see that it comes over here, goes down, and piggybacks in with the main line off your battery. Okay, and it is um, brown or gray, I can't tell which, uh, and green. It's, gosh, it's like a 10 gauge uh, wire, so it's a pretty heavy one. And I put another 10 gauge coming over here from it. Now that is the one that comes straight from the solenoid and that's gonna hook over to the relay to um, lift the shutoff, the um, uh, FSS, the fuel shutoff solenoid. Let's go to the other side. Now to kind of give you orientation, here is the fuse box. I've just got the lid off of it so you can see. I've mounted my relay on top of the fuse box so they're close to, to one another. Um, on the uh, relay, here is the diagram of the relay, how you're supposed to set it up. So on this, uh, on this relay that I use, this is for a fuel pump. This is your main line. It's once again, a, a, about a 10 gauge line. This is the orange when it comes off and it goes to the lift. White on the solenoid is lift on this one. Um, there's a, there's uh, some differences that you always wanna make sure and test this to make sure that uh, which one is gonna be the lift, which one's gonna be hold. Of course, ground is black. But uh, the lift one I have uh, hooked on to the relay. The relay has one line going to the battery positive right there, goes to the battery positive, and then the signal one is this brown one right down here. This brown one, you see the brown one? I've got the brown one spliced in. Brown one is spliced in to that uh, yellow one that I have over there on the starter the starter solenoid. So when the starter solenoid kicks in, uh, this kicks this open and sends electricity down the orange line and the orange line is connected to lift. And so it lifts the uh, solenoid down there. Uh, the purple line that I have down here, once again, these are my colors, uh, just to happen to be the wire that I had available. I have it temporarily wired in here to the stay on. Now that's rigged up over there where I pointed out against the wall uh, up there at the pin number 12 and it's that blue and orange line. It's on with on, uh, run, and uh, start. So it's start and run, it is burning. So that uh, no, matter, no matter what happens, when this thing kicks up, uh, that's gonna be held up until you turn the key off. And when you turn the key off, then it lets go and then it goes down to kill the engine. Okay, um, don't forget to uh, always ground, you got a, several grounds here. You got a ground on your relay. You have a ground on your solenoid, all right? Uh, you also have ground uh, over there.
Okay, uh, look what I'm doing here. I'm programming with my live wire. I'm programming the ECM on this 2008 Ford F350. And I've already, it's already downloaded the stock tune. And now it's writing the ECM tune from um, Randy Gillum. And uh, once we get that written to there, then we're going to recheck, make sure that I've got uh, all my lights out. I'm going to check all the codes. And once I have all the codes cleared and on the, our way to uh, being able to run this thing, um, then uh, we'll be able to analyze any problems. Right now, uh, my alternator is not charging. And one of the things I looked at in the Ford manual was to make sure that there's no DDC, DTC codes uh, to uh, that would hold it back from charging and so in order to do that I had to program program the uh, system once it's programmed then I'm gonna go back and take a look at the DTCs I may be swapping out this alternator because uh, I've got power to the alternator everything seems fluid on all the connections everything seems to be connected and it's all solid the alternator's just not putting out any electricity. So uh, I think this 15-year-old alternator may be going down the tubes. We'll see. Nevertheless, that's where we are at this point.